Now let me read you the law of the house. Now why am I saying this? Because this year in this kingdom war, we are warring for the next house that will be built. We're warring for our future. And here in Ezekiel 43, which is just an, you know, Ezekiel was just amazing, the vision that he had. This is the law of the house, verse 12. This is the law of the house of the Lord. The whole area round about on the top of the mountain Mount Moriah, shall be most holy, separated, and set apart. So what he's doing is coming to a region that has had incredible breakthrough, like this region. And he said, now I'll evaluate the house that is to come. And look what it says here in this passage. It says, behold, this is the law of the house, how it gets separated and pulled aside like Mount Moriah. Well, that just takes you back all the way to Genesis 22. And what God's saying is, I'm going to start looking at the house now in a region. And how that region prospers will be how the glory comes into the house of the region. I think God had y'all here tonight. I'll start looking at a region. I remember the breakthrough in this region. And I'll start looking at the region now, but I'm going to evaluate the house to determine the supply that will be released in days ahead. Now let's look at Genesis 22 for a moment. If this is the law of the house as being separated, filled, full of the glory as Mount Moriah. Let's go back and look at Mount Moriah. Teachers can do a whole teaching on it. That's not what I'm here for tonight. But I am here about what happened in our covenant history on Mount Moriah that will happen this year. See, all of a sudden, Abraham who's had, this is the tenth and the greatest test of Abraham. Bring your son, your only son, and come up to Mount Moriah. He's already had nine testings. He's already given up one son. And now the Lord's telling him, for you to go to the next level, this is the law of the house, you're going to have to come up and worship me in a way you've never worshiped me before. So, I love this passage. Abraham moves by faith and gets up and saddles the donkeys because he, well, Abraham had lots of money. He was the richest man in the whole area. And he tells his servants, settle down and wait for me here. And he makes a faith statement. The lad and I will return. And so the first thing that God's going to evaluate in the house is are we willing to make the faith statement that he's requiring? He came to earth today, the gospels say, would he find faith? 
And so Abraham carries, of course, Isaac. Isaac is not some little child. He's 36 years old. So Isaac some way has to submit. That shows you this year in the evaluation of the house, how is one generation and another generation working together to submit to each other? Who's really going to submit to move his plan into the future? Well, he gets up there and by now, he's come out of Ur of the Chaldees. He's been worshiping the Lord. He's learned to worship. And he starts putting his worship in order the way he knows to worship. See, I think sometimes we're just sometimes trying to do something because we just want to break out of something. Abraham just put the wood in order, it said. In other words, he just did how he knew to worship, and then he laid the promise for his future on the wood. By this time, I'm sure Isaac was wondering, where's this about to go? He, in fact, he says it. But notice, if this is the law of the house, what he's telling us is that as Mount Moriah, what he's telling us is if we worship in the order that we know and bring and lay everything before him, the remainder of this year before we get to September, all of a sudden, he's going to do something. And that's just what he did. The heavens opened, and he came down. He came down in a way he had never revealed himself to mankind before. And he said, not only are you going to divinely recover your promise. I'm going to reveal the provision for your future and cause you to see it. 